okay welcome to lecture number 28 in last lecture we have seen eight different equivalent conditions uh, basically four of corresponding angles two of uh, alternate angles and two of interior angles now in lecture 28 we will get one more condition for uh, the eight conditions along with those eight conditions ninth condition which we will call ninth statement which is also correspondingly equivalent but before that i would like to introduce you to the very famous postulate parallel related to parallel lines called euclid's postulate of uniqueness of parallel lines it is important that every geometry student know this particular postulate it is very simple if suppose one line u is given and another point p is given which is not on u in the uh, the, the the point given is not on the line u then you can draw only one line which is parallel to you passing through p you will not be able to draw two distinct lines say v1 and v2 two distinct lines passing through p and both parallel to you you will not be able to draw it is uniqueness of parallel lines passing through point p which is not on u is discussed by euclid 2000 years before and it is supposed to be assumed to be true and till date nobody has uh, questioned that postulate and tried to prove it and lot many efforts are being put for proving that particular postulate to be wrong and maybe converting it into a theorem but using euclid's axioms it is not possible to prove postulate this is also known as parallel postulate okay so you need to know this now coming back to the alternate angle corresponding angle and interior angle business last lecture we have seen if i have line number 1 and line number 2 which is intersected by transversal at a1 and a2 then angles are formed and we denoted this particular angle as w1 and this is y2 all other corresponding angles can be denoted so the theorem that we will take right now is suppose if w1 equals y2 that means if l1 and l2 are two lines t is a transversal of these two lines they form one pair of alternate angles they form two pairs of alternate angles out of which w1 is equal to y2 if this happens then line l1 must be parallel to line l2 so this is sufficient condition for two lines to be parallel it is sufficient that one pair of alternate angle is congruent so this is also called sufficient condition for parallel lines and now we have to prove it so proof of this goes by a contradiction method and a contradiction method says say for example if possible proof if possible l1 not parallel to l2 then they intersect right and if they intersect let, let them intersect at p therefore triangle p a1 a2 is formed out of which suppose uh, suppose they intersect at p and in this diagram i can show that they intersect at p because i have shown it intersecting lines so triangle p a b p a1 a2 is formed and then you have contradiction y2 given y2 is equal to w1 that means exterior angle of triangle p n1 a1 a2 is equal to one of the two interior angles exterior angle theorem says exterior angle theorem says exterior angle of any triangle has to be greater than any of the remote interior angles these two are interior angles of a triangle and this is exterior angle so exterior angle has to be greater than this or this however we get exterior angle equal to remote interior and hence contradiction contradiction to exterior angle theorem and hence l1 cannot be intersecting to l2 if alternate angles are equal and if they cannot intersect and if they are in the same plane implies this implies l1 parallel l2 
So now this is the ninth statement that we have got. If any one of those eight statements is true, this ninth statement will be true. Now, uh, so this is what is the ninth equivalent statement. Now, unless we prove that if L1 equals L1 parallel L2, then all those eight results are true, then we will not, still then we will not be able to include this ninth statement in the equivalent statement set. So, now the next job is to prove if L1 parallel L2, then all the corresponding angles are equal, all the alternate angles are equal and interior angles to the same side of transversal add up to 180. So, we need to prove this now. So, given now, what is the theorem that we are proving? Given L1 parallel L2 to prove that, say for example, uh, y w1 equals y2 you may refer to the earlier diagram or let us draw diagram this is l1 this is l2 and transversal t uh, this is w1 and this is y2 so if L1 is parallel to L2, we should be able to prove W1 is equal to Y2. Again, the proof is contradiction. You may think of your own proof by stopping at this point and try to write down your own proof. But after thinking, check, cross-check whether your proof is telling with our proof or not. You think on this and come back to the video again. So, proof of L1, given L1 parallel L2, alternate angles are equal. So, again it is a contradiction. So, if possible, W1 not equal to W, Y2. So, if W1 is not equal to Y2, we can always draw another line, which is at Y2. Okay, another angle, another line passing through A1, passing through A1, the same point at Y2. So, now the new line, let us call this new line as L3. If you look at L3 and L2, L3 and L2, Y2 is equal to Y2. Implies if alternate angles are equal that means y2 and y2 both are alternate angles they are equal therefore l3 parallel l2 but given l1 parallel l2 now you find that l1 and l2 l1 and l3 in pass through a1 Okay, so L1 and L3 both pass through A1 and both of them are parallel to L2. Now this cannot happen because of Euclid's parallel postulate. So this is contradiction to parallel postulate. Therefore, whatever we have assumed W1 not equal to Y2 is not true. Implies W1 equals Y2. Okay, so now the two lines are parallel, then alternate angles are equal and if alternate angles are equal, all remaining seven statements are equal. Therefore, if L1 parallel L2, all remaining eight statements are true. If all remaining eight statements are true, L1 parallel L2. So we have got this now, all nine statements are equivalent and if any one of them is true, remaining eight are true. If any one of them is false, remaining eight of them are false. This is as far as alternate corresponding and interior angles of parallel lines is concerned. Now, in this uh, particular lecture, we have a few more definitions. First definition is quadrilateral. A, B, C, D is a quadrilateral. When do we say A, B, C, D is a quadrilateral? It is very simple idea, but we, we need to be mathematically correct. Many of you are aware of what quadrilateral is, but when it comes to definition, we have to put it in very, very precise language. No word should be unnecessary or no word should be missing in the definition and therefore we would give definition of quadrilateral A, B, C, D as follows. We have to have four non-collinear points, four non-collinear points. 
okay so and all these four non collinear points no three of them are collinear no three of them are collinear it's not necessary that all four of them are so no three of them are collinear and no two of a b b c so i call these as a b c d so if i join segments then it should not happen that these two segments intersect say for example ab intersect cd like this then it is not going to be quadrilateral so first condition for abcd to be quadrilateral that a comma b comma c comma d must be points such that no three of them are collinear and abbc cd da these segments should not have any other common point except maybe their end point and then if this happens then ab union bc union cd union da is quadrilateral abc that is what is definition so two conditions no three points are collinear amongst four and abbc cd da should not share any other point other than their end points okay so this is how we will define the quadrilateral and now the definitions related to quadrilateral say for example vertices of quadrilateral abcd are called vertices ABBC CDD are called sides. Then AB two vertices A and B are called conjugative vertices. Uh, then A and C are opposite vertices. Then uh, line joining opposite vertices is called diagonal. Then I mean there are eight nine more defi definitions adjacent sides. AB and BC are adjacent sides. Uh, angle B A D A D C C D C B C B A are called angles of quadrilateral, and um, two angles are consecutive if they have one side in common. Two angles of the quadrilateral are said to be opposite if they do not have any side in common, and in this case opposite angles are bad and bc all these are basic informations about the quadrilateral so that is what is the content of lecture number 28 we have only six very easy problems uh, for homework on lecture 28 i hope you will be able to solve it go through the lecture notes go through the lecture again and again try to write down your own proofs solve all homework problems in case of doubt difficulty contact us thank you